Good morning, good afternoon, good evening viewers. Welcome to the next installment of the Whitby Youth Academy channel. And safe. We, we are in the 2031-32 season. It's everybody's favourite day of the year. It's not Christmas. It's Youth Intake Day. Uh, we have a new head of youth development, so we'll see if he has... Uh, a good intake he is technically better stats wise he applies a different formation um our intake has a five star and we're expecting a good central attacking midfielder um before i click on it i should say that if you're new around here please do leave the uh, subscribe and leave a like as we are three subscribers away from 200 and that'll be obviously very amazing to see the channel reach such heights without further ado the youth intake it's loading okay Okay, that's that's. I'm not upset too, especially if Pete Douglas is good. Um, well, obviously, but I wouldn't be upset about that. But if he is like world class, he would actually soften the blow off um, really quickly. Uh, club, where is he? He's a hot prospect. Ronnie O'Keefe refusing to sign a contract. Five star potential has been developing very nicely this whole season. Well, until recently, he hasn't promoted, has scored two goals and two assists in League 2, and the Papa John's Trophy. Um, good physicals as well. Uh, still only 17, Irish international, and he is refusing to leave. Um, so, if Pete Douglas could be good, would be uh, <laughs> would be amazing, but we'll start off. Ooh, actually a bit of a stinkier uh, intake this year round, as we have a couple good talents, which doesn't usually happen. It'll be nice to have a goalkeeper as well. Um... Yeah, we'll start at the bottom of the Hungarian, Matej Pap. Left midfielder, no pace. He's tall. <laughs> um, uh, Matty Pap. Uh, he's uh, no, he's 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 useless. I don't know if we off do we offer him a contract. I don't think we do. Uh, next, Patrick Iza, centre back, five eleven. Uh, pace nine fourteen acceleration, terrible strength, no jump and reach. Um, is he a fullback? No, no, Patrick Iser is definitely, he, he's, no, I'm not sure he's even a footballer, I'll be honest. Next, Adam Wright, uh, a, a wingback slash fullback, 5 for 8, that's not terrible, good teamwork, good work rate, naturally fit, but no pace. Defensively, below average, potential, nearly fulfilled at 16, Adam Wright, He's not. He's he, he's not that guy. Dan Turner. I don't think he's going to be the goalkeeper that we're looking for. Pacey as a goalkeeper. He's pacey and quicker than a fullback, which is sad. Really good reflexes. Um, no potential though. Good kicking, but I, I don't think Dan Turner will be leading the back line. Would he be leading? I guess he wouldn't be standing behind the back line. Next, we have the top talents. We'll start off with. Well, we'll leave. Paul Gray till the end. So Hayden Gambles, that's an interesting name. Unambitious, terrible physicals. 5'10, midfielder, good passing. Good first touch, I guess. Hayden, Hayden Gambles, we're not going to be taking a gamble on you. I, I really, really doubt that we will take a gamble on Hayden Gambles. Next, Robert Dolan. Central midfielder again. We do need a couple midfielders. We definitely do. Passing 10, tackling 7, technique 12, decisions 12. Physicals are terrible, but he's actually got potential. So, we'll, we'll try train him. He will we'll actually get a contract. Fickle personality. Apparently, according to forums, one of the worst personalities you can have as a footballer, in full manager. As apparently, uh, one day you decide you want to train hard and do well, the other you decide you don't want to. One day you like your manager, the other you don't. Uh, so that that is a shame for Rodolan, but there might be something in the Snebjorn Sigur Karlsson. Yes, perfectly pronounced. I'm sure 15 years old from Iceland. Um, leadership of 12, determination 11. Okay, mentally brave as well. No composure, no concentration, really. Physicals are not. No, they are pretty poor. Technicals are pretty poor. <laughs> it's it's a shame because I, I I want like a cool nationality in the team. I, I want these players to flourish, and be good. But Snebjorn Sigurd Karlsson is he's not giving as they would say these days. Tall though and dives into tackles or seven tackling is a shame. Um, but yeah, I'm 
because he's Icelandic, I'm going to reveal a little plan. Maybe I was thinking FM24, we could do an Iceland build a nation youth academy safe because they have um an iceland they have good facilities and all that stuff uh, which i would go into detail in and in a later date but that's just an idea and it, if you like it let me know next chase Sorn, the striker slash winger decently pacey to be fair to him potential is a bit concerning off the ball's a bit poor composer's poor good first touch Mm, more of a wing over his crossing. Uh, that's a shame. Chase Saunders, maybe if we were still in the Vermont National North, we could be excited about Chase. Um, but yeah, not anymore. Paul Gray, hopefully. Actually, we do need defenders and another fullback. Pacey fullback, please, please let Paul Gray be Pacey. Oh, for goodness sake. Very professional, that's good. Mentally, he looks well rounded ish, I, I think. It's a lot of whites. Potential's a bit annoying. No pace. Good tackling. Good marking. He's a bit small to be a, uh, a full back, uh, a centre back. Could he play in the middle as a Segunda Volante one day? His technicals are a bit, bit smelly, aren't they, for Paul Gray? For him to amount to anything great in midfield. But now, <laughs> hopefully, please, let's save this intake with some elite talents because the top ones are left a lot to desire any cool nationalities no all english top talents maybe there's a couple secondary nationalities but we'll start off with i think yeah just one and a half star players riley dalton winger 12 pace 12 acceleration 11 pace technically he's actually you know eight crossing eight dribbling 10 finishing 11 first touch that's not bad what's this 10 off the ball what's this comp six composure if needs be, he could be a maybe a striker of some sorts in the future, like a makeshift strike striker of no composure. He could he he can also play winger, I suppose. But we have a lot of we play the four two four. And we have a, an abundance of great strikers. We actually we're sixth in the league, and we have scored the most goals in the league. Our strike force is crazy we we need more defensive players and we're considering looking for you head of your development that plays a five back because we just need more center backs um next another striker jay rowland oh casual i i, I hate his personality the most casual i don't know it we had uh i forgot his name now that was a right back a couple of seasons ago he was meant to be pretty good and he had a casual personality and never developed a sit like an inch as a footballer and he was meant to be the next big thing. I think he still had five-star potential by the time we made it into League 2, which was uh, Vos. Cody Vos was his name. Um, injury prone, that's annoying. But consistent performer, striker, for five finishing. Ten free kick taken is nice. Yeah, maybe 6-2 is good. I like big players. Maybe he is a winger. Uh, a, a Jerry Fielding, a.k.a. Jacqueline Lasumba, maybe a future replacement, five-star potential. Definitely going to get a contract. We'll see if he can become... Bravery is good. So he might be a wide target man. Although, as weird as it sounds, it'd be more of a... Um, just a inverted winger who wins a lot of headers. Which is pretty much what Joaquin Asamba does these days. Uh, even still this level, he, he's good to just put off the opposition fullbacks if they're smaller. Chris Reed, another striker slush winger. 6-1, that's good. 15 dribbling. I like he liked that. <laughs> 14 technique, 9 passing, uh, 11 first touch is good. Player 13 is exciting. Okay, I, I do like him. I like him a lot. Chris Reed. His physicals are decently well-rounded. We could improve his pace. He's tall. Composure's not terrible. Decisions are quite poor. We can train that, though. Okay, I'm actually, he's not got five star potential, but he's still young, so they don't, they don't know it fully in uh, Full Manager 23, um, the full potential, it can change with age, so hopefully his goes up, especially if he starts developing like crazy, unambitious is a bit concerning, consistent is good, and no injury prone, it makes me very happy, but 15 dribbling, and 11 first touch, has definitely caught my attention from Chris Reed. Who's next? Scott Hill. Please, 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 we need a backup or like even a starting fullback. Um, please, please, Pacey, please. Oh my Jesus. Why? Why? What's the point? Why are you giving me these players with 
well, 10 pace, I guess, is respectable. But 7 acceleration, physicality is poor, curls the ball. He's got 13 technique, I suppose. Positioning's good, tackling's okay, marking's poor. 5-7 is a bit small. <sighs> Forrester potential's good, inconsistent. It's a bit annoying. He is brave. He is angry. That's that's something. Scott Hill. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. A little determination. That's annoying as well. Scott Hill is a definitely a disappointment. And now I think he was the last one and a half. Okay, speed we've done. Rolling we've done. Okay, two stars. Brian Gorman, a left midfielder now. Let's see. Is he going to be the pace demon we want? He's professional. And he's got, okay, 6-3, love that, love that a lot, crossing of 12, dribbling of 9, okay, finishing's not too terrible, good technique, good passing, mentally he's not terrible, decent determination, professional personality, inconsistent, which is very annoying, no injury prone, 15 years old, actually, now do we, do we develop his pace, do we get him on pace training and make, try like get him into... 13 14 pace and make him just a, a pain for opposition uh, fullback, especially at six foot three. Decently, like he can use both feet as well. I, yeah, Brian Gorman looks good. He might even be a striker one day with his physicality and just presence. Brian Gorman is, is definitely up there. But then we have so many wingers, like we'll go through in the season review. I'll show you the problem we have that we are again only one position uh, in our youth intake, so mainly four that keep uh, getting filled up. But hmm. actually, we do have a defender coming up. Is he the, the penultimate player? Brian Gorman's two, and then. Alan Tomlinson, and then, yeah, Pete Douglas. Okay. The penultimate player. Alan Tomlinson can play centre-back and full-back. Maybe a pacey centre-back, hmm? No. He is not a pacey centre-back. What is he? 16 heading at 5'11". That's such a interesting combination. I, actually, he might be a full-back, I'll be honest. His defensive... 9 marking, 6 positioning, 14 tackling. I, I like Alan Tomlinson, maybe a bit controversially, due to his, not lack of, but not abundance of pace and poor positioning. I think he's, and mentally he's like, pretty like, 8 minimum in his mentals, except for flair which doesn't matter, off the ball. Yeah, ideally you would want it a bit higher. And then vision, yeah, passing's good. He's definitely, yeah, he's he's a fullback and can offer coverage at centre-back, but I don't think we'll be utilising that. He can win the headers, 13 jumping reach, 16 heading, 13 crossing. Yeah, he's going to get put on pace training and Alan Tomlinson. He probably will be a, a, a first-teamer next season while we push for promotion, which is crazy to say, but we had such an excellent season you'll see in a couple minutes uh well depending on how long it takes to get through pete douglas please be a quick striker oh i saw blue and i got excited but 12 free kick take and 13 heading 5-9 that's a interesting combination what is jump reach eight so if he gets there in like in the box and the ball maybe goes like level head height he can tap it in i suppose Dribbling's good, finishing's good. Well, good, sorry, but below average. Termination, spirited personality, I like that. Tries color balls, often with eight passing, eight vision. Tries to play away our trouble. Uh, flair is good. Physicals are not terrible. They're not terrible. 12 exertion, 12 pace. Yeah. He probably will replace Ella Freyu at some stage, or probably another different winger. Is he better than O'Keefe? Okay, actually, let's, can we compare them? Ronnie O'Keefe. Uh, if I can... O'Keefe will be down here. Ronnie O'Keefe. So Ronnie's obviously had two years of development. Let's not forget that. No, Ronnie is better now. But we'll, we'll see. Hopefully Pete Douglas is one of them ones who will develop. And he's 15, so he's got extra time in the, in the Youth Academy. But that's been... Our intake, which it's been it's been a mismatch. Not a lot of great players. Some of them are for the first time. I'm not gonna bother offering contracts because it's gonna be a waste of time. Maybe Matty Pap will get one because he's got a cool name and a cool pass, uh, cool nationality and just a 
fill out numbers, but most of these players will not get one. Not most, but some. Um, and yeah, I think uh, that's it for this section. I'll see you in the season review. Before we go there, I'll also, once again, um, I'll beg <laughs> uh, for you to hit the subscribe button and the like button. And even leave, leave me a comment. I always respond. Uh, if you like a player in our current squad or in the youth intake that you like, and you would, would like them to be named after you, do leave a comment asking and I'll probably... Uh, make the change for next episode and yeah see you in the season review and now for the season review portion of the video it's um i always say this uh, it's it's actually been a crazy season i feel like this whippy save is has been the most ridiculous and unrealistic save <laughs> that i have ever attempted and actually been a part of um in my full manager journey in five years um I'm not going to spoil it, so we'll just go through it as we see, as you can see, we did win the Papa John's Trophy, which is, I would argue, the most prestigious and and illustrious trophy you can win the Papa John's. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we did win that, and we also, you'll see, well, you'll see what else we also managed to achieve. We did finish sixth, but as you can see by the P, we won the playoffs, which, which, I, how 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 we finished sixth in the uh, in, in the in the overall season our end of season form near the end um uh no before Walsall we lost to Stockport we lost to Yeovil and then we beat Barrow three two narrowly and then we just win loss win loss win loss honest I like I feel like we League One is because Vanarama National and League Two there's not that much of a step up. I feel like League One, you get championship teams in there, like, we will be... I know I say it every time we get promoted, I don't know, every three seasons, that's a magic number. Um, we've, we've just made it ten years into the future, I think, as well. And, um, yeah. Not more, more than ten years now, I think we're twelve years in. But, uh, yeah, let's just go, we'll, we'll get to that stage when we, when we get there. So, the biggest win was a 5-1 against Rotherham. In the Papa John's Trophy, so it uh, doesn't really count. Eh. Match to remember was three against Barnsley. I would have argued it would have been the, the the playoff final where we won in ninety third minute. You know, either or. And then goal of the season was a Papa John's uh, great strike from the seaside. It's rubbing his scores a free kick from the edge of the area. It always ends up being a free kick uh, Whitby Town, and it's always Jaquin Lasimba uh, with the free kick. So we'll have a quick. Look, and I don't know why the season we get promoted, we actually get the proper season review, which I was very shocked. Ooh, okay, that's actually not bad. I was uh, quite shocked to see it, but no, 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 no. The finances, we got our reputation up, which is really good, as that in theory should suggest we should be attracting better uh, youth players uh, coming through and hopefully more fans and, and gate receipts and all that stuff. O'Keefe has been selling, uh, outselling our shots, which is very sad, as he's still not signing a contract, and uh, he's got a month left before he gets released. And I don't know, what, it doesn't say in the rules that after his contract expires, can we go in for him? Because technically he hasn't left the club, it's just his contract expired. So I, I, I don't know about the legality of that, but if no one else signs him up, I, I feel like it would, it would be a waste of O'Keefe's career and, and talent. Not to pick him up, but as you can see, we've improved in everything, which is great. Jacqueline, Allpress, Okori, and Waters have been selling our shirts. We lined up in a 4 2 4 as always. The accolades fans play the season, if you're in your Okori, naturally. Um, young player of the season, Yatek he did score the winner and he assist, assisted the, the winner in. Uh, no, he he scored the first goal in the, in the playoffs final and then assisted. Uh, the winner in the 93rd minute. Goal of the season, Jacqueline Lusson, which we saw. Top goal scorer, Kieran McGrath, 16. We, our goals have been very spread out because we actually managed to score the most goals in, in the whole league campaign, I'm pretty sure. We, we are top goal scorers in the league. We only need to finish sixth, so it shows the imbalance that we have godly attackers but terrible defenders, and, and it's 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 true. I, I, I can see by the stars and even just looking at the players and the way we play, it's uh, it's a problem. I think Yokori also 15 assists beat the setting a new record um, for assists. Beat previously 14, I think, held by Shakina Sumba, now 15 by Ifin Yokori. Um, one of the most men of the matches. Highest average rating of a 7.0. And most passes completed, Jose Hurtado has um, 
done that with 36, which is actually quite low, because I've seen like players have 80. Um, and yeah, the new records most goals by player was Ian Walters, who also got a hat trick. Uh, and then McGrath had a hat trick at some stage, most assists with we say 15. Morgan Bacon, 352 career appearances for Whitby Town. Um, and uh, the Rhodes has come to an end, he is retiring. He did declare retirement alongside two other players. They'll have a look. He is not going to be a member of staff, so he's just going to disappear. Which is very, it's a shame, as I did want to offer him a contract. Jermaine Tansy, uh, still the club's top goal scorer of 115, although that might probably will get overtaken very soon. Uh, Yak McCourt, also retiring from the club, is our oldest player at 36 years old, nearly 37. Um, yeah, we won the Papa John's as well, <laughs> which is amazing. So now, if we look at the past stages, uh, we had a really solid start to the season. We were actually first in the league on like match day 12 and 13, which is crazy, or 11 and 12. Um, what was it? 13. Uh, 12 and 13, we were at the top of the league. Um, and we weren't, I don't think we fell out of playoffs. We were in eighth, so we did fall out of the playoffs for two weeks. And then we, I don't think we fell out ever since. Uh, match day eight. I don't know. Like it was a very surprising start to season. I don't know why it just suddenly clicked. I think our strikers, like a Corey and McGrath, had a season of development. Um, Krakus Lafreyu. We had Ian Walters coming through the season, who had an immense development. The youth academy got promoted and started scoring goals, hat tricks here and there. Um, we got Dougie promoted into the at the back, offering more coverage and rotation. Clark has developed into a very nice centre back. I feel like the team has come like it's getting good, like proper good now. Where we did win the Upper John's Trophy. I reckon if we didn't, if I didn't push for it, because I was resting players in the league to win the Papa John's, because I didn't think we'd win the playoffs. Um, I didn't think, uh, and I thought getting a trophy might be good for the reputation, but getting promoted does that as well. Um, and yeah. We, we somehow did both. We did a double, uh, and that was pretty cool. Now, if we look at the schedule, um, if we look at the different competitions, where is uh, the Papa John's Trophy filter? Um, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that. I just want to look at the Papa John's Trophy. So, our journey in the in the group stages, Man United, we beat them 4-1. We lost on pens to crew and beat uh, Rotherham 5 1, which is a very dominant display uh, in the group stages. Then we beat Wrexham 1 1. Uh, then we went to, well, beat them 1 1. We won on penalties. Then against Barrow 4 1. Nottingham Forest and 21. So this was a shock, but I feel like the under 21s teams are quite easy to beat. Like we beat the Manu ones, uh, I didn't think, but the, the press made it a big thing that we beat the under 21s. We played Peter, but this was a big. Game. This is where I thought our journey would come to an end. They were first in the league. I don't know if they actually finished. They finished fourth, so maybe we disrupted the harmony, but they were first when we were playing them. Um, and we were lucky with nine men to take it to Pens. Um, they scored, and we scored right after Kieran McGrath. And we took it to Pens, and we managed um, to beat them, luckily. And then we went to South End, who are also in League One. And we won 2 0. Um, the referee had a 3.99 uh, match rating, so you you know a lot of things had to happen for us to win. But it was it was nice to get that. And I'm sure uh, it helped their reputation and it actually pushed Kieran Oggy into the club icon section. Although he should be legend, really and truly. But you know we're not gonna be too upset. About it. And the, the Papa John's Trophy is a weird weird cup because um, last season Grimsby Town won it and they were in the Roman National League. Um, and then there was a couple champion championship club, uh, championship club, Plymouth were, actually they got knocked out by Liverpool in the 21s, but there were some, some strange winners, uh, in the Vero National League, the team won it, which is crazy, um, but yeah, we, so did we. Uh, the under 18s managed to win the the title yet again, uh, for the third time in the, no, second time, or third time in a row? Uh, they won it regardless. Uh, 70 points, demolished the league again, 22 wins, 4 draws and 2 losses. And that's, uh, they won it really, really early on. Uh, and yeah, we promote a lot of our better players like Ian Waters and Ronnie O'Keefe was there in the beginning as well. And they still managed to dominate, which is lovely to see. And they also got to the under 18s youth, uh, FA Youth Cup final. Uh, they lost 3-1 to West Ham, I believe. Which is it's it, it, it's a shame. It would have been nice to see 
what they could have uh, if they you know won that maybe they would have given us more reputation and prestige but it was it was lovely to see them win the league again and it, and it shows that players are well like our youth academy is actually producing good players uh, if we actually have a look at the players that played in the under 18s uh I'll, I'll flick through them you can pause look at the stats the progress the the season stats how they actually uh, managed to to perform and and all the goodness so feel free to pause on your favorite players and i'll just flick through and maybe make some comments about standout players so brian gorman just recently promoted charlie greenfield uh i did offer him an extension five star potential his development has been a steady uh incline which is which is good to see hawley i don't know much i can't even remember him but he's there Scott Hill just promoted. Ibrahim probably going to get released. It's not the best centre back we have. Alfie Jones is a player that will probably get promoted. The six foot four Welsh centre back, uh, four and a half the potential. Been developing really, really nicely till the end of the season, and he is definitely going to get uh, a, a call up to the first team when he, uh, you know, get, uh, becomes a turns eighteen. Becomes eighteen. Um, Kengo. Actually, how did he do? Wasn't he the Ken? No, we do have a Kenyan striker in here somewhere. Alvaro Navarro, my favourite uh, name of the save so far. The Swiss 17-year-old uh, now played 15 off the bench, so maybe he needs a loan move. So I'm going to add him to the development list and offer to clubs. Get him out on loan because he actually—I didn't realise he has good potential. I just thought he was a funny name, but he has—he might have a future at the club, and I would love to be able to say his name during game time. Nicky Nicklin, another cool name, never developed, which is a bit of a shame they did get there yeah, did get an injury um well it was just recently but we'll offer offer him out um on loan i don't know if people were going to make offers now for these players because it's the season that didn't take over lorcan got loaned out to king's lynn uh, he's made 43 appearances for them this season which is very nice to see has developed as well which is good he got called up to the under 19s for france uh france island which is good uh vincent on that was was it him he's yeah he, he is a kenyan striker how many did he score 15 and 12 assists which is very nice uh bit, 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 a little bit of development he might need a loan to 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 kenya so we'll add into no not the unwanted he's too young for a loan uh matty pap just been promoted promoted signed uh chris reed also sigur kalason as well george solis uh tomlinson Daniel Diemi, he went on loan as well to Jete, and he's been developing very nicely. So another centre back. We're, we're getting a couple now that are challenging for the first team, and maybe the likes of Eze uh, is going to get released. DJ Beecher, he's also been good. Prom like he's probably first team quality now. Definitely like a rotation option. Um, played very well, developed very nicely. Sorry, in the in the under 18s. All in Pete Douglas just promoted. Charlie Greenfield and uh, yeah, so that was that was all the under 18 players. I'm sorry, apologies if I went too quick, but I think that's good enough. It's like it was slow enough for you to be able to pause and actually look through the players in your own time. As for the transfers this season, we did get a couple in the under 18, so we had Tyron McFadden now on loan uh, to Blythe this season. I think they are our rivals, so it's interesting they loaned him out. He has got good development. Um, I don't know if he's going to be useful next season. It might be maybe try and get some money for him. Uh, we still haven't sold a player uh, for money, which is a which is a shame. Lorcan, uh, we have gone over him. Uh, Gattiano Trainer, he gets called up for the Italy under 18s. Like offered him uh, another year at the club. His development's been a bit. Mm, uh, I don't think he's going to be good enough to offer any coverage for us. But I thought if there's clubs interested to loan him, maybe someone will be interested to buy him. But I don't think he's going to be a starter for us. Ivan Wilberforce, or Ewan, I Wilberforce, cool name. Also went out to Blythe, which is very interesting. I'm, let, let's just check real quick, because am I going to create... No, Blythe are our competitive rivals. Um, must be just local, so we just send them out. Um, nearby, decent development, although ultimately a bit of regression from where he was in September. Seven goals, it's not, not terrible from Ivan. Uh, Nicky Lillis, what was once meant to be is, is astonishing of how much like he got found out with his current ability, potential ability. Like he's actually it made sense why he never developed that much because his developer his potential ability was overrated so much that he never really had that room to actually grow. 
which yeah it's a shame i thought he'd be the next bobby moore he is six foot now so he did grow another inch uh, which is good for nikki illis but he is going to get released um next we have daniel adeyemi we went from he got loaned out to nigeria and then yuba diara actually got sold because we have too many wingers um and i tried to sell him up for money i tried to sell him i first offered him for 160 then 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 all the way down to 1k and i kept getting offers for zero and he wasn't like 600 pounds with no potential and no re no current ability just wasting space in the in the squad uh so yeah we, he, we let him go on a free he made 106 appearances for us with six goals i thought he was gonna be crazy uh i thought he was gonna be amazing but he never had the, but another Lillis situation where he had like overrated potential uh, but I'm glad that he's still out there playing football and then for the release players uh, Graham Keegan got released and he decided to retire instantly uh, David O'Brien same situation instantly retired Matthew Malbon also retired I think there's gonna be a theme here um, Jordan Dunn also retired but you can't even click on him Calvin Broadley I'm very surprised that he retired because I thought he had uh he could be good for a different club. I'm surprised no one else picked him up. He was he scored goals for us. Uh, poor Calvin Broadley. And Colin Harris also has been released and retired without the option to click on him. Uh, how is like Cody Vos? Yeah, he retired. I think we looked at that before. Uh, and yeah, those were the transfers. And now for the first teamers this season, let's let's have a look how um, they done and and whatnot. So it's the same ordeal as in the youth uh, part of the of the video. Pause it on your favorite players. Have a look. Um, uh, whatever you wish and pause at your own uh, uh, discretion. So first of all, Patrick Amadou is our starting goalkeeper these days, which is crazy to think, because I, I, when I think we got him, I saw his physicals, and I thought there's nothing this guy could be. Uh, but he's been developing nicely. He's got a terrible <laughs> uh, appearances to, to goals conceded ratio, but he's, he's, making, he's making progress. Regan Armour, I actually did give him some game time. I started off with him because I thought he would have better potential and he had better physicals as a sweeper-keeper. Um, but yeah, no, he's not that guy. Morgan Bacon is retiring. It was his last season. Only three appearances, uh, four in total of one Papa John's Trophy appearance. He actually did play in the playoffs because uh, Amadou got injured, I think, or he was suspended. or one of the He had to play some game somewhere. Um... And yeah, he's retiring, and we have no option to, to 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 give him a contract to be a staff member. I can't advise him to become one, um, which is a, a big, big shame because I'd love to keep him on the club. Our first club legend, um, 352 appearances in the end, which is uh, amazing feat. Josh Brazil, he's an emergency backup. This should like at this stage, if we need him, it's a bad day. It's a very bad day indeed. Um, 6.65 rating with, with 10 appearances in total. He's an emergency backup, as I said. Um, but yeah, if reaches potential already. He's Mark Carson's getting released. Michael Clark, uh, top dog, really. If we have a deeper look into stats, 6.2, 12 acceleration, 9 pace. With trainers, quickness, maybe he'll have more. Strength of 11, strongest player, I think. Cent no, strongest center back. Marking of 11, tackling of 12, with positioning of 10. Our best defender by far, with good anticipation, bravery, composure, concentration. I am in love with Michael Clark, and I just hope this line just keeps going like this. We won't see any more injuries, although he's injury prone, but we, we only got one minor injury. So I think we got quite lucky this season. Collet is getting released. Teach me how to Dougie Dougie. Jesus, Dougie. <laughs> so many Dougies in that sentence. Uh, recently just sustained a moderate injury, which is very annoying for no reason. Like three of our players nearly in a season just got injured. Uh, but he's been promoted to the first team. 17 appearances uh, for the main team. Uh, and I like him a lot. I think he's got potential and and he might be the next Clark. Uh, still 16. Krakos Alafreyu. It's a sad, it's a sad tale um, of Kriakos. I think we'll in the summer we'll try to sell him or loan him. His potential is not there, and we have just better play. Well, not we do have better players in his position. Worst case, we'll try to maybe negotiate him, be it an emergency backup or a fringe player, uh, but still a decent servant uh, and decent performances this season. George Eze, one of the remaining OGs who is not going to retire for at least probably four years, but who knows? Um, does he have a future? 
maybe he still looks okay he looks like a good emergency option Gabriel Freer the Yak McCourt uh, not regen but I guess like he, he reminded me of him at one stage I don't know why he's training agility and balance maybe I think that was a mistake I think he was meant to be training quickness not agility and balance but he's got good agility and balance now so that that's 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 something I suppose um, yeah he's got game time this season good rotation option I don't mind him Bill Garwood uh, he, last season at the club his development's been iffy he's not got much left to develop he's 24 now 600 pounds a week is is crazy i tried to negotiate a lower deal because he'll be a good backup rotation option uh but he doesn't he's not a fan of it ashley green uh first season in the far in the main team as a rotation at fullback left or right back i would i wouldn't say he's not done too terribly i'm actually a big fan um yeah, I just keep. I hope to to see his development keep uh, to, just for it to keep going in, in this trajectory. His pace has improved, and yeah, I just hope he's uh, he keeps doing what he's doing. Justin Green, no, uh, the the the, fault, the fake Green. I um, well, he he's not like Josh Brazil, where I like his name. Um, he's just going to be a waste of space, and he is getting released. And Tiguan Babuda, no one came in for him on loan or to, for sale. He's not eating up the wages for sixty um, pounds a week, but yeah, it is last season. I imagine he, he might even retire because the game, the league, is not in the game. So I don't know. Um, Emil Hansies, he used to be the best player at the club. Now we have the likes of Okori and, and all the other guys that will go to come through soon. Three hundred thirty-nine appearances. He will be the record appearance maker very, very soon. Um, and yeah, I don't know. He's had a rough month i think but there's still something left in him to develop he's 24 now uh and yeah definitely a useful player for next season john hogan i actually haven't looked at, at this before but it's it's concerning me that he's got free star potential he's a decent servant has played a majority of our games in midfield he's not been too terrible got a couple well a couple got a single goal but yeah, that's something to think about. That John Hogan is not the future. Uh, Jose Hurtado, one of my favorite players. I've started watching the Narcos with my girlfriend, and uh, yeah, Colombia has a special place in my heart, and I'm a big fan of Jose, starting centre back this season, one of the mainstays in the team. And I just I don't, his development in in this year has been a bit concerning. Had some injuries, but I expect. For it to you know kick in next season hopefully uh, if if he it doesn't nah, he still be here regardless if he doesn't develop a crazy uh, Joaquin Lasumba uh, became just stationary regular you know development finishing went down for some reason back to full finishing um, but still a good option for us got another year on his contract maybe I'll try to negotiate a lower wage for him next season um, but yeah it's just his physicality. Just height, really, and his jumping reach against the small fullbacks really pays off, and he can obviously take a good free kick, as he always gets gold a season from those free kicks. Uh, Jermaine Tansy, still at the club. So much unfulfilled potential in Jermaine, but he's 24 now. I don't think he's going to, you know, have a, a major boost, but he's just roller coaster and emergency backup these days. Um, for the boys up top, we have a lot of, of players that can play in this position and are better than him, but... I'm nostalgic. He's a top goal scorer at the club. He's got a good return. Um, so, he'll probably be here for a while still. Richard Lee getting released. Nicky Lillis, we've spoke about, probably getting released. Leo Lloyd. It pains me. One of my favorite players early on, but he is also getting released. Um, the six foot seven Welshman. The beast from, well, he's not, I don't even know what you rhyme it with. Uh, the land of the sheep, I suppose. But, yeah. Well, we'll track him. I hope he doesn't retire instantly. That'll be a big shame. Uh, Yak McCourt is getting a, his stats are going up, but he is retiring. I tried to offer him. Jesus Christ! Why? Why? Oh, because we got promoted, so his expectations are going up. No, he doesn't want it. Well, when he gets unemployed and he's out there with no no income for a while, we'll see if he's he's going to take that deal or not. Um, exciting. We've looked at Kieran McGrath. This season, another great season. Top goal scorer this, with 16 goals, 20 appearances, 13 goals, 3 assists. Um, his stats on face value don't look insane. But he plays really nicely and I like him a lot. With 14 strength, I feel like he just pushes past uh, some fullbacks and defenders. 
and yeah, I, I like him a lot, and, and I hope to see him continue to develop. Ashley Miller getting released. Charlie Mitchell still here. Uh, good backup left back these days. Um, I thought he would be like a best left back for a long, long time, but uh, they are better than him now. Ronnie O'Keefe, this uh, pain, so much pain. He wants to leave. I don't know why. He I tried to offer him a contract. He's still like 16. He wouldn't take it. And since he just keeps doing it, but he, he looks good. 14 accelerator, 14 pace, man, and he's improving still. Driven personality, 14 apprentices, three goals. I'll keep offering a contract until well, it expires, and then after it expires, I'll still offer him a contract. If no one picks him up, I'm I'm getting him back in because I don't, I don't think that's fair to us and to him just to let him be in the in the full manager stratosphere floating about with, with no purpose um, if Yanni Okori player of the season 12 goals 12 uh, assists uh, is a great return from him uh, his development has been a bit iffy but he is still on paper our best player still 17 so yeah I'm hoping that when he turns 18 he will, uh, his development will start going up uh, Jordan Williams he was getting released Carlos Alberto Robles one of the biggest flops of the save, I would say. I had big expectations for him, but maybe it was unfair for me to have them of him. This is when we had really small centre backs and six foot with jump, eleven jumping reach was good, but he's getting released. And uh, he's this this this. Yeah, okay, he's improved a little bit with his loan of six point two four last season. I'm pretty sure it was like five point seven four. Uh, Daniel Scott. That we have a lot of midfielders now that are better than him. Maybe he's getting a bit overpaid, although we are in League One now, so we are big boys these days. Um, I still like him a lot. He still gets uh, some rotation game time in there. He might need another loan. I don't know. Uh, Dan Tiernan, he's getting released. Trainer, sold and released. Cody Trinari, uh with 17 flair. He's actually been developing very well. Can He's actually offered some coverage at fullback with his free tackling uh, and free marking and, and positioning which was dangerous but we just needed the bodies at, at, at fullback um, and yeah I'm just happy to see him develop and I think he has a future the club probably going to take over from like La Sumba or, or, or one of the wingers maybe like a Jermaine Tansy replacement Luca Trinari. Uh yeah I'm not decided on him he's got another year so probably loan Ian Waters uh, has actually developed really really nicely in the youth academy came through and has scored four goals and got three assists in 14 games uh his stats look very nice with 12 decisions 15 flair off the ball composure finishing first touch his physicals are not terrible he's just five foot three but it kind of helps he's like that messy where you can't like get your like defenders can't get his arm on him because he just runs under arm so they can't like push him away and all that stuff so it works as advantage 16 technique as well these days a very very good footballer we signed him on a on a good deal we have extension on it as well um so yeah i'm very excited for ian waters although he i didn't i didn't tout him to be the next big thing but he is stevie white one of the players but also the third and final player retiring this season stevie white doesn't is not becoming a, a staff member which is a shame because i really wanted him to but yeah it's the end of the road for stevie white at 33 years old played his whole career at whitby town Nearly a decade. If he stayed one more year, he would have. He would have been here a whole journey. Consistent performer in the end. Uh, 160 appearances, 19 goals. Thank you for your service, Stevie. But it's uh, it's time to say goodbye, which is a shame. Um, yeah, Texaya. He had a massive injury. Uh, he broke his foot. He was out for like a month. But it, but before his injury, he was he was a beast. He was he had like eight goals before he got uh, uh, before he got injured out for four months which is really annoying but his stats you can see uh, are good his physicals are are a problem for position defenders and I like him a lot and he is definitely going to be here for the foreseeable future Ali Wadiemi our left back uh, on either side actually these days um, disappointing I think is the word for Ali I don't know if it's his unambitious personality or lack of consistency um but he's not developing. He's actually... I don't know if it's regressed because he actually regressed or if it's because of better players coming through and developing. But he's still the starting left back for us or even right back. But I don't know how long that can continue. Uh, for AJ Allpress this season, because there's so many players that play up top. He's been rotated heavily. 21 appearances, 11 off the bench. 
consistent performer now. I don't know if he always was one, but he is now definitely. Uh, and yeah, he's a he's a beast still. Patrick Amadou, and I, yeah, that's I think that's us back to the front of the list. And now for the uh, what's the word? The extra stuff that doesn't really have a category. So we have uh, first we'll go for the stuff. So we have a new assistant manager, Joss Ashby. I think he looks pretty good. Like he's got decent coaching stats, judging play potential, people management. He's a good assistant manager and he'll be there for a while. New head of youth development, Gus Scott Morris. 15 working with youngsters, 11 uh, judging ability and 14 player potential, which is apparently what you need. And he's fully determined, which makes me very happy. Um, so he should be a good assistant manager, uh, head of youth development. He plays a 4-2-3-1. Um, uh, we're looking really for one that probably plays five at the back because we just need like godly defenders. Uh, David Lloyd, still a coach at the club. Halford, I think, yeah, he's getting, um, is it this season? Yeah, he's getting released and we'll try to uh, get a new, better coach next season. Sean Desmore, he, mm, uh, he's still okay, unless we find someone better out there. And then Johnny Crooks is the head performance analyst. The lovely, lovely trim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then your head physio and sports scientist. We did. We do need a better sports scientist. Though, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, another cool tidbit about what happened this season: um, Ireland actually won the Under-19 European Championship, and we actually had a couple of players that played in the final and won uh, this competition. I bought home back some medals. I think McGrath, Law, Lorcan. And Ronnie O'Keefe were both uh, were all in this team, which is uh, pretty cool to see them achieve this. It's actually the second time they won it. They won it in 2028, so maybe they had some players in there. Well, I don't think we did, actually. I think it was this season we only had some players in here. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll go to the club info to finish it off. I hope to get some improvements in the youth facilities or training facilities. We got promoted. Can we stay up? I'm not sure. Uh, Alan Tomlinson is our hot prospect. Which is a very interesting... I mean, he looked good. I was excited by him. So we'll see if he if he lives up to it. If you knew Corey, as he should, is a key player. Um, and yeah, so I would like to thank you very much for, for watching. If you made this far into the episode, you clearly enjoyed it to some extent. So do leave a like. Uh, do subscribe as we're nearly at 200 uh, subscribers, which is an amazing achievement. And I'm very, very grateful. And yeah, I wish you the very best of days today.